So Nancy Pelosi is still Speaker of the House. The House is still in Democratic control as long as this lame duck session is going on. But in January, when Congress comes back, the new Speaker of the House will be a man who is known for a lot of things, but uh, specifically he is known for getting very emotional in public. There's some, some things that are very difficult to talk about. Family, uh, kids. I can't go to a school anymore. I used to go to a lot of schools. And you see all these little kids running around. Uh, uh, making sure uh, that these kids have a shot at the American dream. <laughs> like I did. <laughs> it's important. In a 60 Minutes interview this weekend, top House Republican and House Speaker-in-waiting John Boehner put his heart back on his sleeve and got verklempt, uh, as you heard there. He got verklempt about how he feels when he sees children, uh, like at school visits. He also got verklempt um, about the fact that he gets verklempt. You probably found out by now I'm pr a pretty emotional guy. <laughs> and there's just some things that, you know, trigger uh, real emotions. And I was talking trying to talk about uh, uh, the fact that I've been chasing uh, the American dream my whole career. And that was it. That was it. And you're going to try again? I know. John Boehner is starting to get more attention for the amount of emotion he's willing to show in public. And it's true that him crying so much in public is extraordinary. But he should get credit, I think, for showing an extraordinary range of emotions. He not only cries a lot in public, he also is willing to lose his cool and scream and yell and get red in the face. Look at how this bill was written. Can you say it was done openly? Yes. With transparency and accountability? Yes. Without backroom deals and struck behind closed doors? Hidden from the people? Hell no, you can't! Have you read the bill? Yes. Have you read the reconciliation bill? Yes. Have you read the manager's amendment? Yes. Hell no, you haven't. I'm trying to catch my breath so I don't refer to this uh, this maneuver going on uh, today as uh, as uh, chicken crap. All right, but this is nonsense. If John Boehner were a woman, you'd be hearing about almost nothing other than his emotionality, given even the prospect of him becoming Speaker of the House. But because he's a guy, I think nobody knows quite what to make of how emotional he's willing to get in public. Uh, after all, almost all of the other famous crying in public stories involving politicians are about how the crying in public called them into question as a candidate or maybe hurt them in some way. Most famously, uh, there's then-Senator Edmund Muskie of Maine, an early favorite in the Democratic presidential primary of 1972. Mr. Muskie called a press conference to speak out against a newspaper publisher who had printed negative stories about him, including one that turned out to be a hoax and another that went after Senator Muskie's wife. By attacking me, by attacking my wife, he has proved himself to be a gutless coward. Maybe I said all I should on that point. But it's fortunate for him he's not on this platform beside me. A good woman. Senator Muskie maintained that he was not, in fact, tearing up that day in New Hampshire, that what reporters saw and described in reporting that press conference were snowflakes melting on his face, not tears. Regardless, that has gone down in history as the beginning of the end of Senator Muskie's presidential ambitions. But here's the thing about that, about the politicians can't cry in public myth that in large part was born on that day. Whether or not Muskie actually cried or whether it was snow melting on his angelic face, Senator Muskie was reported to have cried that day, 10 days before the New Hampshire primary. On the day of the primary, he won. As recently as 2008, also in New Hampshire, there was Hillary Clinton, not so much crying as becoming a little tiny bit emotional, an event which convulsed the Democratic primary process and all the punditry in the world for days on end. You know, I have so many opportunities from this country. I just don't want to see us fall backwards. You know, so. You know, this, this is very personal for me. It's not just political, it's not just public. I see what's happening. And we have to reverse it. And some people think elections are a game, they think it's like who's up or who's down. It's about our country, it's about our kids' futures. 
for all of the massive crisis and conniption that caused in the commentariat in 2008, Hillary Clinton won that primary. She won in New Hampshire. If that incident had an effect on voting in New Hampshire, it very well may have helped her more than it hurt her. There's nothing wrong with politicians showing emotion. There's nothing wrong with politicians crying in public. A, it demonstrably does not hurt them with voters. But B, it shows us what they feel passionately about. And what's wrong with that? When Judd walks out of this chamber, <clears throat> when he walks out of this chamber for the last time, he'll leave an enormous void behind. The true measure of a man is how you handle, handle victory and also defeat. He reached the pinnacle in government. But he defines his life by other roles. A father who gave unconditional love. A grandfather devoted to his grandchildren. So at this moment, I wanted to be home. To come to this place. And to see all of my friends. When I think of what Kyle has meant to me over the past 15 years, I can't help but think that's exactly what he's been to me. Senator McConnell memorializing a longtime staffer uh, in February there at the top of that block there, memorializing Senator Judd Gregg. Uh, that was just today. Each of those incidents and the million others like them uh, in which public figures become verklempt in public tells you nothing bad about that person. We are about to get probably the most emotional politician in modern American history taking on a very visible role, third in line to the presidency. With John Boehner about to be in the headlines every single day for all of next year and beyond, we're going to have to get past the shock of his visibly strong feelings and the feelings that that invokes in us. We're going to have to figure out how to keep paying attention to what John Boehner is saying, even if he is crying while he is saying it. Members on both sides of the aisle who feel differently about our mission in Iraq and our chances of success there. After 3,000 of our fellow citizens died at the hands of these terrorists, when are we going to stand up and take them on? When are we going to defeat them? I put my, myself through school, working every rotten job there was, and um, in every night shift I could find. And I poured my heart and soul into running a small business. You probably found out by now I'm pr a pretty emotional guy. <laughs> and there's just some things that, you know, trigger uh, real emotions. And I was talking, trying to talk, about uh, uh, the fact that I've been chasing uh, the American dream my whole career. So I asked all of you. Both sides of the aisle. What's in the best interest of our country? Not what's in the best interest of our party. Not what's in the best interest of our own re-election. What's in the best interest of our country? Vote yes. Pause there for a second. What he is crying about there, what he is upset there, uh, now, again, there's nothing wrong with crying, uh, and it's distracting and novel and interesting that he is crying, I know. But what, what he's talking about there, what that speech is about, is TARP, the bank bailout. When he says, vote yes, there at the end, what he is saying is, vote yes for the Wall Street bailout. The fact that he is crying while talking about it can't occlude our vision now that he's about to be this powerful. The fact that he is crying while begging for a yes vote on the bailout is fascinating. What politician does that? That is kind of cool. But the fact that he is crying is less important than the fact that he later essentially campaigned against the bailout. That he started talking about the bailout as if he not only didn't vote for it, but he certainly didn't cry and beg other people to vote for it during a speech on the floor of the House. So I'm going to ask my colleagues. If you've had enough of the bailouts, if you've had enough of TARP, uh, let's do the right thing for the American people. They're already saying enough is enough. Let's end TARP. Let's pay down the deficit. No more bailouts. Let's cut spending back to 2008 levels, uh, back before the bailouts and the stimulus and all the nonsense. 
all the nonsense that I cried about and begged you to vote for. Now, most recently, Sunday night on 60 Minutes, we saw John Boehner crying about kids uh, and their futures. It's fascinating, the fact that he will cry while talking about that in public. It's amazing in terms of just who he is as a person as a poli and as a politician. It is, however, not more important than what he actually wants to do for the kids who make him cry. He is not an actor. He is a politician. He's a powerful politician who gets to make laws for the country. And despite the crying, part of his pledge to America is a pledge to cut about $100 billion out of the national budget. That is $100 billion in discretionary spending cuts. And he wants to not have any of those discretionary spending cuts come from defense or homeland security or veterans affairs. So what does that mean? That means taking $100 billion out of, uh, among a few other things, education pulling it out of there. The cuts to domestic spending, including education, John Boehner is proposing, would amount to, as Steve Bennon at Washington Monthly pointed out, it would amount to nearly quadruple the largest cuts in discretionary spending faced in the entire last generation, nearly four times. So yes, John Boehner may cry while talking about all the awesome things he wants to do for children, and I think it is great that he allows himself to cry in public when he thinks about these things. But having a positive feeling is not the same as doing something positive. As humans, we react to a politician crying about children's welfare because we instinctively think it implies strength of that politician's commitment to improve children's welfare. It doesn't always. When the new Congress convenes and John Boehner is Speaker of the House, remember this, just because he's crying about something doesn't mean he's going to fix that thing. Crying in public is neat, I am all in favor. Crying in public, however, is not the same thing as fixing the thing that makes you cry.